In this lesson, we're going to look at the API for performing cross-domain messaging in HTML5, whereby you can send messages from one window to another, even if they've been downloaded from different domains. So we have two files in the example. The first file is main window.html, which allows me to deposit money and withdraw money from a bank account. So let me deposit a thousand pounds. And then when I click the new window button, it'll open up several windows and each window contains a web page from a different domain. So the main page is in my domain one and the child windows come from my domain two. Okay, so when I click the broadcast button here, it'll broadcast a message from the main window to the child windows and the child windows handle that message and update the balance that each window is displaying. So a thousand pounds is now displayed on each window. We can also post messages back the other way. If I click the levy fee button, then it'll post a message back to the main window and the main window will accept the message and take 10 pounds off the balance and tell each window what the new balance is. So let's take a look at these two files in the editor, main window and child window.html. I have the editor open here ready. You need to make sure if you want to run this example to copy these two files into different servers on your machine to illustrate properly the effect of cross-domain messaging. So main window.html first of all. I'll take you to the bottom of the file just to show you what the page actually looks like. So we have a text box where we can enter the amount to deposit or withdraw. And then two buttons to actually do the deposit or the withdraw. And then another two buttons to open up any number of new windows and to broadcast a message to each one. Let me take you to the top of the page now and show you some global script variables. Uh, we store the balance in a global variable at zero initially. This is the URL of the document that I'm going to open up in each page. And as you can see, it's in a different domain, my domain two, compared to the main window. And also, I keep an array of all the child windows that I've opened so that I can broadcast a message to each of them when I click the broadcast button. I've also got some variables here just to do some maths, just to lay out the child windows nicely. Now, the first few functions here are relatively straightforward. I'll just scroll it down a little bit so you can see what they look like. So the deposit function just simply gets the amount from the text box, adds that amount into the balance, and then pops up a message box to say that's been deposited into the account. And the withdraw function does a similar kind of thing. It withdraws the amount from the balance. And then when I click new window, it does some maths, first of all, to figure out where the new child window should go. And then it calls the window open function to open the window. Remember the child window URL was my domain to child window .html. So that's the window that's going to be open. And the maths here specify where the window is going to be located. And then we store that window also in the array so that I can broadcast a message to each one later on. And that happens when I click the broadcast button on the main page. And this is how that function works. I iterate through all my child windows and I use the post message function to post a message to each window. So you take a window object and you call the post message function. The post message function takes two parameters. The first parameter is whatever data you want to pass in to the other window. So that in this case, it's just a simple number, the balance, but it could be a complex JSON object if you wanted it to be. The second parameter specifies what do you expect from the child window? Where do you expect the child window to have come from? Now, a star means I don't actually care which domain the child window was downloaded from. If you want to, you can stipulate that the child window must have been downloaded from this domain. If you say slash, it means the child window must have been downloaded from the same domain as the main window. Okay, so this post message function will post this data to the child window. So what we need to do now is to see how the child window handles that message. So let's go into the child window, .html, and let me just scroll down a little bit just to show the user interface first. It has a div where the current balance can be displayed. So initially the balance field says unspecified. This is the important point. This is how you can handle incoming messages that have been posted to you. On your window object, I've added an event listener 
so that when the message event comes in, it calls my event handler function here on message. So when the main window posts a message, this function will be invoked. And inside your handler, you always get the opportunity to check the origin of the sender. And you probably want to do that in most cases. The on message handler has an event parameter, and the event parameter has an origin property. This is the origin, and that includes the schema and the domain name, plus optionally a port number. And the origin, you can test it either against a single domain if you want to, or maybe you have an array or a collection of domains that you're prepared to accept messages from. So it's always up to you as the receiver to decide whether you want to accept or reject the message that's been sent to you. You can never be forced to do anything when you receive a message. So in this example, if the origin of the sender was my domain one, then we get the data that's been sent over. Remember that was just the new balance and we display that new balance on the screen. So it puts the new balance into this span down here. If the origin was anything other than my domain one, then we pop up a message box to reject the message and tell the user that it's been rejected. So that's how you can send and receive data from the main window to the child window. You can also post messages in the reverse direction. And that's what happened when I clicked on the child window, the levy fee button, it sends a message back to the original page. So window opener is the page that opened this child window. And I'm posting a message back in the reverse direction to say, I want to take off 10 pounds from the balance, please. And I'm not really fussed about where the main window came from. Star again means I don't really care what is the origin of the receiver from the sender's point of view. So when the child window posts a message, to the main window. The main window handles it in the same fashion. You have to, in the main window, handle the message event. And I've done that here down on line 67. On the main window, we also handle the message event. And the main window has its own on message function. And that's what we have here. So on the main window, the on message function checks the origin of the incoming data. Who sent the data? If the data came from the child window domain, my domain two, then we accept the message and we just tell the user that we've accepted this data from the child window. And we take the data, which is 10 pounds, subtract that from the balance and then do a broadcast again. And the broadcast function will send messages to all the child windows again with the new balance. So that concludes the lesson. We've seen how you can communicate messages from different windows coming from different domains by using the post message function. And then when you receive a message from another window, you handle it via the message event. And in the message event, you have an origin property that you can check to see whether or not you want to accept the message that's been posted to you by the other window.